remember way, way back, like, oh, I don't know, two weeks ago, when the general thought was that Andrew McCutcheon's return was going to overshadow everything about this coming summer. Hmm. What if that script has completely flipped? Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 14, Rockies 3. Pirates with a three-game sweep in which they scored a total of 33 runs going to say it again. Colorado stinks. Colorado's going to end up with one of the worst records in all of Major League Baseball. Going to say it again. Coors Field is Coors Field. And I'm going to say this again, too. I don't care. I don't care. If you watch the first two innings of yesterday's game, as opposed to just looking at the box score, you wouldn't care either. Because the exit velocity off of Austin Gomber, who, again, admittedly had nothing, was extraordinary. You saw hitter after hitter after hitter just smoking the ball. Wouldn't have mattered where that game was played. They were still smoking the ball. Lots and lots of hitting for this team. Lots and lots of offense. Lots and lots of fun for everybody. For everybody. The team is 12-7. and seven. They're coming home. They're playing tonight. They're beginning a Four-game series against the Reds at PNC Park. 84 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. None of this could be going any better than it is. Other than, obviously, the injury to O'Neill Cruz, this has just been a dream come to life. And you know what? It's been so upbeat around here that I think everyone's forgotten what the season was supposed to be about. Can I ask you a trick question here? Who is currently this team's leading hitter? Real quick, don't go looking it up, real quick. If you said Brian Reynolds, you will have correctly identified the second leading hitter with an 883 OPS. Number one is Kutch. A 1003 OPS. Kutch is out of his mind at the plate right now. Slashing 310, 417, 586, four home runs, four doubles, nine RBIs, 11 walks, three out of four on steal attempts. Remember, the old man was supposed to be doing a farewell tour. Funny how that works, huh? Here's some of what Kutch had to say to reporters in Denver after the game yesterday. It's, it's just a matter of time of hitting them. That things happen that way in this game. But uh, for me, you know, I've been around enough. I'm not going to get too high on it. You know, it's just, just one of those things where it's like it was a good series. We took care of business. We won a game we were supposed to win. And, um, but uh, we got to continue to do what we appreciate every single day. We got to continue to do the small things. I don't care what the score is. I don't care how, how well the pitching is or you know, how, how many numbers or how many runs we score. How many runs we score. We got to do the small things right. We got to continue to keep just pounding away at that because ultimately, that's what's going to win the game, and that can be what loses the game. So we did a good job today, um, but you know, there's still some, some room for us to grow, and uh, for us to get better. So, um, you know, so it, was, it was a good three games, um, and uh, yeah, the guys are, guys are good, they're feeling it, but you know, we still got some, still got some game up I'm going to take you guys back to a conversation that Kutch and I had. This was in Cincinnati. The morning of the season opener, we were talking about his pending return to PNC Park and what the introduction would be like, what the crowd reaction would be like. And right around the time he started getting a a little philosophical about how that might feel and everything, I said to him, you understand that when you come back, that the people in Pittsburgh are going to be expecting not hoping for, but expecting the MVP version of Kutch. And he'd been kind of through the whole conversation, just kind of looking straight ahead or or glancing off uh, at a game that was playing on the TV. And now he stopped and he looked up at me and he goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. 
I'm expecting that too. And it reminded me, and I shared this with him as well, of other athletes, not at all of his caliber, who returned to Pittsburgh later in their careers and felt kind of the same vibe. And this is Steelers, Penguins, Pirates across the board. They felt like the last time these people saw me or they were cheering for me, I was, you know, up here at this level. And now I'm in my mid thirties and whatever, and maybe I'm not going to be able to produce at the same level. And he goes, I'm expecting that. I'm looking forward to that. I want that. Because the truth is, when Kutch went to San Francisco, to New York, to Philadelphia, to Milwaukee, those places saw him as, oh, yeah, that familiar name. He used to be good for the Pirates. And they would treat him as such, not rudely, not meanly, but he was just another guy, just another guy. So even in Philly, where he uh, was playing in a obviously hitter-friendly ballpark and he popped 20 plus homers. He did 17 again last year for Milwaukee, another hitter friendly park. It never felt like there was some recognition that Kutch was this special player. All he has to do in Pittsburgh to be seen that way is to exist. But what he does instead, and this is the most Kutch thing ever is to walk out onto that field for those introductions, for that first at bat, the way he stepped out of the box and very clearly lost it at least a little bit. You saw it. Is to take all of that in and say, all right, everybody, I see you. I see what you believe that I am. I also believe that I'm capable of that still. And I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. The most cutch thing ever is this opening season of this schedule. And ironically, don't let Kutch get lost in everything that the team is achieving right now. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit ProjectChildSafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Ben, who says, Hey, DK, based upon the early season performance so far of these Pirates, do you think that this is the type of team Ben Charrington was trying to build? Or is it just luck, like a confluence of every phase of the game being a little bit better than expected at the same time? Ben, the last thing I'm going to do when things finally start morphing for this team is to pick apart who got lucky and how. A big, big part of building a roster, any sports executive will tell you, is that there's got to be a convergence of making the right decisions, of putting forth the best possible development and instruction, and then getting lucky. It's just in there. It's in that mix. It'll always be in that mix. Sometimes we're talking about health. Sometimes we're talking about a performance that goes above and beyond even your own internal expectations. I'm going to throw a couple of names at you here. One is Jiwan Bay. I was asking all of last year, what is this guy doing in the minors? Why is he there? He's clearly hitting at a level that no one in Pittsburgh was, and he was doing it better than almost everyone 
in Indianapolis. So why was he there at all? Well, maybe the Pirates just didn't believe in him. Maybe he just didn't fit in with the rules as they were at the time, because he's not a launch angle guy. He's not going to be somebody who uh, hits for a lot of power. And he's not, as we've seen of late, uh, on the negative side, some complete defensive product at any position. Does the spectacular occasionally, but doesn't mean he's a regular, everyday major league guy out in the field. What ended up happening? Well, the rules changed. Pirates didn't have anything to do with that. And the kid, to his credit, just shot his way up the depth chart by being a little bit cocky. You can call it confidence if you want. And putting forth his skill set out on the field with a little bit of flash, a little bit of flair. And making his presence known and making it known I'm sure to an extent to management that, hey, I'm here. I was here all along. That's a little bit lucky. A little bit. Not too much, though. You still have to acquire the player. You still have to move him up the ladder in the minors. And then from there, you still have to not be so obstinate that you don't give him a chance just because you want to make yourself look smart. But no, I'm not going to look at what's happened so far and say, man, they've just really, like, hit gold here. I I don't believe that they have. I also don't believe that it's a product of the schedule. I was hearing that a lot through the Colorado series from the the cynical, skeptical segment of the fan base, but then go ahead splitting at Bush Stadium. Then go ahead with beating the defending champs here at PNC Park, the Houston Astros. Uh, This will even out. The Pirates are not going to finish with, I believe they're currently pacing toward 110 wins. Okay, that's not going to happen. All right. So a lot of this is going to even itself out over time. And there are going to be people who go, ah, this is it. There comes the big fall. Here comes the whatever. Just, Just chill. All of this is, to me, found gold. In 2023, this is found gold. Hope, as I've been saying from the moment O'Neill Cruz was helped off the field. Hope that this team can tread water until he returns. He is the big steaming variable in the equation. He's the one that can rocket you to some other level. All you got to do between now and then is just keep playing good baseball. It doesn't have to be spectacular. It doesn't have to be 33 runs over three games. It doesn't have to be nine consecutive quality starts, which, by the way, Johan Oviedo registered to continue that streak for the rotation. It doesn't have to be any of that. It just has to be good baseball. It has to be hang around, stay in there. And from there, hey, man, you know, if you aren't thinking big right now, and by big, I mean just, you know, finishing over 500 or hanging around in the race or whatever it is. If you aren't thinking big right now, I can assure you that you're thinking very differently than the 26 people in that room right now. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. I will be at the ballpark tonight covering the game for DK Pittsburgh Sports. Hope you can check out my written work on the website and the app. And we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 